moment the fight is finally going to take place and we have uh, got George and his dad on the other end of his line. Good morning, boys. Oh, how are you, mate? Uh, obviously, you know, we're, we're super focused and, uh, you know, squeeze this in, but we're looking forward to having a great chat. Yeah, oh, thanks. How are you going, buddy? Good to hear from your champion. Good day, Jimmy. Now, tell me, boys, when are you guys flying out? This is a question being asked. When are you that's, going? It's going to be next week. That's a secret, though. Um, okay. That's a secret. I'm not letting anyone know exactly when I'm flying yet. I'm coming in uh, kamikaze mode, so uh, but it will be next week. I'll be coming in, and uh, look, I've had fantastic work. This has been one big continuous camp. You know, a lot of people say, uh, "How long are your camps?" But you know, you know, Cambodia is never out of the gym. So no, you're not. I'll be you? ready. I'll be ready since June nineteenth. I'll be ready every single day, and uh, you best believe I'll be ready October fourth. Okay, mate. Who have you been sparring in preparation for the TFMA Lopez fight? When I was in the US, I've 135 rounds with uh, Arnold Gonzalez and Adrian Sosa, two wow. undefeated, uh, good, solid guys. And then when I came back to Australia after the uh, the low stuff up where he got uh, COVID, um, we're straight back, back into work and uh, been spying Lenny Zapovicna and Terry Nicholas, uh, both strong boys, both, uh, you know, especially Lenny's very experienced and Terry's very sharp. So they give me fantastic work and uh, these are the, the, the quality guys you need to, uh, to be able to win these big fights. So, um, we, we are shooting in, in, in every direction now. We are we're just ready to fight. I love that, mate. I love it. Have all the delays affected you in any way? Has it been hard to stay focused, knowing that it might be delayed again? No, no. Um, look, Barash has come back to the most focused fighter in the world. So, you know, I've just adapted and rolled with the punches. And, um, you know, the way I looked at it is, you know, every day I'm just getting better and better. So it's a worse position for TFM, my life. You know, he, he's rested on his laurels. He's, uh, you know, he's been lapping up that... that them, Undisputed titles, so I've just been been working hard, and uh, you know I take a lot of similarities to uh, Rocky Three when Clubber Lane came up against uh, Rocky in the first fight. We saw the American enjoying his time, you know, having uh, you know, a lot of lot of fancy stuff around him and interviews and, and public uh, workouts, while Clubber Lane is just putting in the work, and that's how I feel. I'm Clubber Cambosis right now. Okay, this next question is for your dad. Jimmy, we heard that new contracts needed to be signed for this fight. How have the contracts differed from the initial contract to the latest contract? Yeah, well, obviously we had an initial contract in place um, for the fight that was scheduled originally June the fifth, and then obviously they moved it uh, because of, and it wasn't it wasn't because of Mayweather like June the sixth. It was more about the uh, the mm -hmm. lockdown and the restrictions in Miami, and then they were getting lifted. So. Once they got lifted, you had full capacity crowds. So Trilla obviously been a business. They moved it to June 19th. Obviously, the contracts hadn't changed in the way the clauses were written. It was just the dates and the venue. Yeah. And once again, the fight fell over due to, uh, you know, uh, Lopez uh, testing positive, which I basically got the medical reports for that. I wasn't leaving America until I fucking got them yeah. to make sure that... Uh, you know, he was positive and he has got a medical report and so I did get two reports. Uh, but the thing is... 100%? You know, 100% he was positive with COVID, was he? Uh, yeah, they performed two tests and basically the first test was performed that just to confirm that he was positive. The second test, because obviously Trilla lost $5 million US uh, in regards to this event falling over, but yeah. not only that, George Cambosis hasn't got his $3 million and Lopez hasn't got his money neither, so... A lot of people were affected by this, so Trilla did not did not take Lopez's word for it. So they sent they sent their own private doctors over to to Lopez, and they did their own test. They performed uh, a, a general um, PCR test, which confirmed he was positive, and then they performed a CT cycle test, which meant it gives you a time frame of half how far you're into your um, COVID period, and they wanted to determine that if he was at the end of his COVID cycle, they would have basically tried to get Lopez to fight. But because he was in the beginning of his cycle, he was only five days in, there was no chance that they could actually get him in the ring mm -hmm. because they could have got sued by, you know, putting somebody that was ill into the ring. Okay. So the fight got canned. That explains it all, then. Yeah, so obviously from there, um, obviously as we know that... Uh, the time was ticking again. We were wondering when this was going to come about. And the IBF pretty much, uh, Trilla said they want to bring it to Australia. And the thing is, we said, listen, 
you know, if you can do that, you've got all the money in the world, go out and try to make it happen. But the thing is, once uh, they lodged to the IVF that they wanted to bring it to Australia because they are the uh, promoter, so they've got they've got all the exclusive rights. When you win a first, but you've got all the exclusive rights to host the event, even on the moon if you want to. But um, obviously, uh, Lopez got in touch with Pat English, a very famous and popular attorney. He lodged a complaint saying that, no, we're not coming to Australia because we have to quarantine. So obviously, our um, Trula lodged with their attorneys. We lodged with our attorney, Greg Smith, who, repre- who represented um, um, uh, Canelo Alvarez with a design bill and a $280 million payout. So we, we, uh, we've got Greg Smith on board for that one. And then obviously, the IBF made a, a decision and literally they said, um, that uh, the event must be held at a location where no country is required to quarantine. So that took Australia out of play. Mm-hmm. And obviously then they were given a date. So obviously Trilla come up with um, pretty much the 5th of, of October. And then we signed the contracts. So nothing's changed on the contracts except the date. Okay. You know? And then all of a sudden I get a fucking another contract 24 hours later and saying that we want to move it to the 4th of October. And I said, well, what do you mean you're moving it? The IBF's already sanctioned it for the 5th. But the thing is, the reason why they're moving it is because it's going to clash with the New York Yankees and the Boston Red Sox in the playoffs. So they didn't want the crowds to be affected at Madison Square Garden. So we just said, okay, we're agreeing to move one day forward on the 4th of October. Okay. Okay. So a lot of of complexities in these... uh, these international contracts and, and what's involved with attorneys and everything else. But the main thing is, we've got to fucking fight again. Okay, did the Lopez people insist on a rematch clause in the contract? No, there's, there's no rematch clause uh, in the contract. And um, and that's good because exactly how uh, he was not given, uh, you know, that, that, that same thing when he fought Lomachenko. There's no rematch clause okay. in his last fight. Um, okay. It's perfect because when I beat this kid, you know, he's going to have to beat through all the, uh, mm-hmm. the games that he's played with, with me. He's going to have to beg, but uh, you know, I'll be looking for, for, for bigger fights. I'll be looking for Lomachenko, uh, Devin Haney, you know, Javonte Davis, yeah. they're the guys I'll be chasing straight after this fight. And uh, Lopez can uh, go up to 140 like he's been uh, crying about and saying he wants to go to 140 because he's struggling with the weight. So, and okay. he can do whatever he wants, but he won't have them belts. So he's Tiafema Lopez. He's a mega star in the sport. His last fight he beat one of the best pound-for-pound fighters, Vassal Lomachenko. And he's already looking for future mega fights. Well, he's got to get past you first, George. But, geez, George, I've got to say, mate, uh, fight on the neutral corner show at the Croatian Club to Madison Square Garden. It must be a huge, huge buzz, mate. Yeah, look, it is. It's amazing. And, um, you know, that's what happens when you put a lot of hard work into it and and sacrifice. And, you know, you you put every bit of yourself into the sport. And that's what I do. And, uh, you know, I live this sport day in, day out. I don't drink. I don't... don't, uh, party, I don't sell uh, you know, drugs, I don't do any of that, that stuff that a lot of fighters get mixed up in. Mm-hmm. I stay very focused, I keep my tunnel vision and, um, you know, from them days, you know, that's, that's why it's all young amateurs and, and young fighters to, you know, take the right course mm-hmm. and go through the, the local shows and the promoters like yourself you know, and build your experience and build your way through because when you look at yourself, you know, five, six years later and say, well, I came from there to here, you know, that, that's... That, that's yeah. inspiring you know, a lot of people, and uh, you know it fitted me good to where I am now. Well, look at you, George. You're fighting for four titles: WBA, IBF, WBO, and WBF franchise lightweight championships. Both you guys are undefeated. That's four world titles on the line. Wow! And we've got that ring and that beautiful ring magazine as well. So it's five belts uh, that he's going to come back to Australia. Mm-hmm. It is huge. This is this is the biggest fight in Australian uh, you know, history. I, I don't huge. remember. Uh, Another Aussie fighter, you know, who was born and bred here, you know, came through the, the, the circuit of Australia in the amateurs and, and came all the way through to five world titles. Yes, we've had some great champions, but, uh, you know, this is huge, especially in Madison Square Garden. So, um, you know, what, what a journey it's been. You know, when you look back, just my, my last three fights, taking out Mickey Bay at Madison, Madison Square Garden, former mm-hmm. world champion, taking out Lee Selby in his hometown, you know, in, in uh, London, mm-hmm. another former world champion, very accomplished fighter. Now, I've been the undisputed champion in his hometown. That there is a Hall of Fame career right then and there. Yeah. 
Mate, you're going all the way. I am assuming you must have your final press conference with Tia Fermo Lopez coming up. What surprised me at the last one, the last press conference, we saw you both, at, was that you remained so cool. It was like you were the champion, and I think that really got under Lopez's skin. Lopez started ripping off his shirt and carrying on. Please, George, yeah. please do the same again at the next press conference, mate. Do it. Were you surprised? I'm, I'm cool, calm, collected. I'm you were. Calm, collected. Were you, surprised how we, were you surprised how we carried on at the press conference? No, you... because I, I, understood, I knew that I was going to... Uh, I, I knew I was going to get under his skin and I knew that uh, the way my, my mental warfare and, and the games that I play and the things that I say um, was going to get under his skin. So, uh, you know, I wasn't surprised at all. And, you know, when you look at both fighters up there, you think that Cambosis is the undisputed champion. This is a challenger, you know, losing his mind. But uh, obviously... That's how a true champion acts, the way I am. And yeah. uh, in my head, I'm the undisputed champion already, and in a lot of heads, you know, I'm, I'm the champion already. But uh, October 4th, I'll, I will win all them belts and just have it on paper. So yeah. everyone knows that I'm the champion in the world. This one's for you, Jimmy. What's a ride been like so far? Mate, it's been absolutely amazing, mate. I mean, obviously, back in the day, dealing with you, Paul, you know, and, uh, you know, which was always fucking great memories, you know, and obviously... You know, we're gonna we're gonna come full circle again eventually. Mm -hmm. You know, we get all those belts, come to Australia, never have to leave Australia. That's always the grand plan for anybody that goes out and wins a world title. Yeah. Um. You know, basically, you know, everybody wants to win a world title, especially in Aussie, and then they fight in their hometown and get all the crowds and supporters behind them. And obviously, yeah, it's, it's been amazing, mate. You know, all these, you know, negotiating with all these different. Mm. Lots of people and, um, you know, travelling around the world and watching George fight, haven't missed no fights, and I won't miss nothing, mate. I'm, I'm, I'm basically... In, yeah, and I'm actually working his corner this time round. It's the wow. first time it's ever happened. Wow. I'm going to be I'm gonna be working as a second in his corner, um, you know, purely for the fact that, uh, you know, I just say the little things to him because he's my boy, and obviously, mm. you know, we've got a great, great bond and relationship, so... I've already uh, got my application and I've got my licence um, from the uh, uh, New York State Athletic Commission. So, yeah, I'll be working the corner for this one, mate. Good on you, mate. So you should. Now, I didn't want to bring up facts, so let's keep going. We won't bring up the facts, will we, mate? <laughs> no, 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 mate. We won't bring up the facts. I mean, it's, it's you know, politics and boxing sometimes uh, ends up in a brawl. Mate, you must know the ins and outs of contracts by now, wouldn't you? I've got a very, very, uh, yeah, a very good understanding of, uh, you know, how things work in contracts and basically a couple of the little, you know, the tricky bits that pop up and obviously the, um, you know, the, the slightest of words could mean a thousand different things and, you know, but um, it, it, for George, for some reason, it just never seems to be an easy road, mate. Every no, time it doesn't. Something, especially on the international circuit, you know, um, we took this course and we took this journey a long time ago and we, we made a decision that once, uh, you know, he, he pretty much cleaned up the division out in Australia that we were going to take this, this this road. And it's always been a hard road and obviously, you know, me behind the scenes contractually getting stuff. And look, I've got Peter Khan as well, mate. You know, we're co-managers in this business mm -hmm. and Peter Khan doesn't make a decision without me making the final decision uh, because, you know, everyone did it for their 10%. I'm in it for the, for the love of my my, my son. So um, the simple thing is, you know, I have learned a lot and I'm still learning, mate, you know, um, with with contracts and... Uh, but look, you know, you've got to be on your... You've got to be sharp. You've got to be on your toes, mate, because you can get sucked into a contract and you can get sucked into a clause um, and, yeah, it, it kind of throws the fighter out because he, he probably thinks, well, why do we agree on that? Um, mm. But, yeah, you learn over time. You must read that fine print in it, inside and out, mate. Mate, I actually read it multiple times. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously now I've got the attorney overseas as well, Greg Smith. So the thing is, I'm picking stuff over to him. And basically, he he's, he represents George as a client. So, yeah. uh, you know, he's, he's, he's good value, mate. So, you know, at the end of the day, nothing's for free. So, but the thing is, if it's going to... If it's going to make sure that you don't, if I don't stuff up, stuff up on my end mm. and make sure that uh, the attorney basically makes sure that everything's sweet, mate, paying a couple of bucks is always well worth it when you're uh, at that level of, uh, in the boxing world, you know? Yeah, right. George, what's been your finest, um, what's been your finest uh, display so far? What's been the best fight you've, you've had so far, mate? Uh, your best look, there's been many good 
many good performances, you know, like even when we look back here in Australia when I t- took apart Ogilvy, who was inside the top uh, 10 in the world. And then I went and took out uh, Camille Byler, a, a bigger, you know, obviously like Waterweight, mm-hmm. who came down. Uh, both great performances, but, you know, the Mickey Bay fight was a good fight, good learning curve as well. We learned a lot in that fight. And I think the Selby fight, um, I just picked apart a, a pure boxer, a guy who, who is known for his boxing skills. And I absolutely picked him apart in his own hometown. So I'd have to go with my last performance. I do but too. I, that's I the best one. I have gone so many more levels. I have gone so many more levels. I have learned more. I have, you know, perfected my craft even more, you know, since that fight. So um, you know, I, want, I want everyone to be tuning in because they're going to uh, you know, see something they haven't even seen from, from me before. If they thought that the Selby fight was, was unbelievable and how good I boxed, and I'll wait till they see what I do against Lopez. Okay, there was a good article you put on your page, um, Lessons in Sacrifice for Scared Aussie Boxers. It's a great read. Any listeners out there, just give us a bit of insight, uh, George. You're gonna, you actually are going to miss the birth of your, your second second or third child. I've lost track of you, buddy. Second. Yeah, it's my third. Um, third? There's, there's a high okay. chance. Yeah, there, there is a high chance that, yeah. um, you know, I'll miss that birth because of obviously flying out and, and the missus due. Um, but, you know, we never know. That baby could come. As we speak right now, mm-hmm. um, but that's the sacrifice that we make as fighters. That's what we have to do, you know, to, uh, to fulfil our dreams. And now, uh, fortunately, ninety nine point nine percent of fighters here in Australia don't want to do it. They want to stay here and uh, try to milk the system. But you know, it's a different different uh, game over there. They, they are, you know, you got to be an absolute beast in the US. You know, they'll, they'll chew you up and, and spit you out. Um, you know, in your first fight. So, you know, I've been there for a long time. I've been doing my thing, continually winning, still standing, still undefeated, and uh, that's to make history. Okay, boys, I'm, thank you so much for coming on. On behalf of all of, all of Australia, we wish you guys all the best when you get over there, mate. We'll all be watching. I'll tell you that right now. Definitely. Yeah, well, it's, it's been a pleasure, Paul, having, uh, having us on your show, mate. It's, uh, it's been a long time coming, mate, but... Uh, I was quite nervous when uh, when you saw me, Jimmy, you're coming on the show and uh, <laughs> I'll be interviewed by Mr. Paul Nazari, but, mate, it's Stop. been an absolute pleasure. Stop it. <laughs> and obviously the fight is on a weird date, but I hope everyone tunes in. It's obviously going to be Tuesday here, October the 5th, midday, main event, KO, uh, the fight app. Um, you know, we can't control any of that, but the thing yeah. is, the simple thing is, we've got to fight again, and it, 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 it's you know it is what it is in regards to the promoters and how they do business overseas. Mm. Uh, but I'm sure a lot of the Aussie fans, and um, you know, obviously the media, once Cambodia gets all them belts and comes here, I'm sure certain parts of the media are basically going to come flocking and, and, and asking questions and, and, and wanting to speak to George. So uh, you know, we're, we're uh, you know we're looking forward to what's next, mate, with this fight now. Well, good luck, guys. All the best, and I hope, hopefully I'll catch you before you go. And we're going to go out with uh, Eye of the Tiger for you, George. I love it, Paul. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Okay, boys. Thank you so much for coming on. Bye for now. Thanks, Paul. Have a good day, buddy. You too. Bye. Bye, guys. And that was Jimmy and George Cambosas online. It was a